Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here and Mark's Aquatics. Today we're going to be looking at our little Neon Tetra babies. We've got, um, these are the parents. We've put them, I'll put them in the bench tank. And we're going to nip across now and we're going to have a look at their little fry. And have a little chat about those. Okay, little update on the fry. Okay guys, it's been a couple of days since they've been free swimming now. As you can see, we've got quite a few out there on the right hand side above the peat. Yeah, you can see a couple there above the peat just hovering around. Some on the side of the glass on the right hand side there. And there's a couple of little ones buzzing around by the heater. There's quite a few, there's about maybe 20, 30 in total in this. They only had one, the one batch, just to show you guys that you can do it. Obviously you can have multiple spawns and bring on bigger batches if you'd like to do it. You just have to have separate tanks and keep bringing them all on and then when the fry obviously hatch out you can mix the tanks together later on and um, or keep them in their own separate tanks to keep down on the waste. Someone did mention about filters. Now you're not going to need a filter because you can do partial water changes every, well, the way I do it, every couple of days. I just do around 10% because there's minimal waste. Obviously these things are microscopic and they're not really producing anything at the moment. It's going to be pretty negligible the amount of waste that they're um, that they're passing into the water. So we're not going to have any ammonia or anything like that. We've got plenty of life in there with that Java moss. That's going to be growing. That's going to be using up any any nitrate in the water as well. If you've got any floating plants, guys, throw those in the top as well because that's going to help you with nitrate reduction and all the other nasties that we get in our tanks. But I like to keep everything really still because. Just e even at this size, they're so small that even a little bubbler going through a little sponge filter, it'll upset everything, it upsets the surface. This way, you put the food in and it's you just see it drifting down. I'll try and get you some footage of the infusoria which is floating around in there, which we've been adding to the system to feed these little guys. But as you can see, they're just microscopic at the moment. You can see the size of them to the heater very very small I'll try and I'll, I'll try and get some better footage for you now I'll try and zoom in and get some a bit more closer footage for you okay well that's about as best I can do for you at the moment with this um, with the camera I've got you can see they're super small but we've got quite a few in there which is really nice to see it's really hard to see them but the more you pan around with the camera and the more the days progress the bigger they get, the more show off it seems, and um, obviously because they're getting bigger, you're noticing them more. But they're in amongst that peat, there's some monstrous bloodworms in amongst the peat as well, wriggling things. You can see the water worms wriggling in amongst that peat there. And there's a little guy there with a little fat belly, just hovering above the lot, picking off the ones he can fit in his mouth. One thing you've got to watch with these little fellas is they're extremely greedy and they can eat themselves basically eat themselves to death they can fill themselves up so much that it can kill them and they can choke so be pretty sparing with the food obviously keep adding it in daily but but try and keep that food down to a couple maybe two three times a day because there's going to be so much in amongst the peat if you do it with peat that is but I found that this is the best way to do it to bring them on Just giving you a little look around the, the Java moths there and you can see some some blood worms. Now these I haven't actually put these in here. These have these have come in either on the on the peat or the um, or the mosquito larvae have been laying eggs in the top. And we've got a lot of small ones there. But those are probably the micro worms that I've been putting in. Some probably aren't. Some will be coming off the moss. It's only when you start zooming in on these things that you really do start to see how much life is in amongst the tank. You can see them burying under the peat there. And as these tetras get bigger, they're going to start seeing that movement in amongst the peat and they're going to start picking them off and parading on those. And that'll stop the little sods hatching and biting me. 
<laughs> we've got a good little rate. The other tank next door, I'll just move the light across. There's a few diving for the hills there when I put the light across. I'm filming this at night because it's easier to pick them up. You can see them just zipping around. You can see a couple of water fleas on the glass as well. There goes one there. And there goes a little tiny midge larvae there, look. There's a couple of them there. But they'll stop picking those off as time goes on. That's why I put partial lids on, like I've got these drip trays on. But they've got the, um, they've got the little hole there. So it's easy for me to feed. Keeps that um, condensation, keeps that from condensing away. But we haven't got as many in this tank. They didn't breed as well as the other ones. I think there might be 10, something like that. Obviously I've just put the light straight on there, so they've dived into the moss to hide, so. But they'll come out given time. There you go, I've just moved it over again. You can see the, you can see these little chaps chasing the little bugs around. Sometimes you can get up into the water column. You can see those little specks. You see that's the infusoria there. That's a quite a good little shot to show you guys. It looks like little grains of salt whizzing around, but if you notice they're all going in different directions. They're all alive. And that's the micro life that you've, um, the cultures that you've been bringing up if you've watched the first video on the culture, how to make that infusoria culture up which is just all the little microorganisms that live in amongst your tank we've just bred them on a huge scale just to feed these fry up to get them past that micro stage where we can get them onto our team here and bigger bigger prey items to feed them look at that interesting stuff you get a microscope on this water it's fantastic the stuff that you can see You can see them now just hovering around on the right hand side there. Little beady eyes just watching us. All moving, little synchronized movements there. Look at that. Yeah, that's a bit clearer. Now you can see all the, uh, the micro life, which is crawling amongst the glass. You can see the blood worms under the peat. Obviously this is in my workshop and I've got a pond in here so we've got a lot of wildlife in the workshop as my pond's halfway in the shed and halfway in the garden so we get a lot of little black flies and things which are breeding in the uh, in the pond and they come they obviously come out and they're laying eggs there's a few around on the tank now and they'll be dipping their little eggs into the water here I'm trying to wait and see if any of these little fry are going to come up close to the front of the glass which would be nice for you guys to see you can see a few water worms on the right hand, on the, sorry, on the left hand side, just wriggling away there. If you didn't watch the first episode, guys, nip back and I'll show you how to make the water worm culture. You're going to need a starter culture, but you can pick those up from eBay or uh, maybe a fellow aquarist. We'll sort you out a little teaspoon to put in some uh, porridge oats or something. But there's so much life in that tank, it's unreal when you don't have the camera close up. You can't see yet, you can't see anything, but as soon as you get that zoomed in, everything seems to just spring to life and it's like a little miniature city, everything whizzing around, busy. There's a couple of them now trying to, they're coming a little bit closer, it'd be nice if they came into view for you so you could see them. Little blood worm there, wriggling around, just poking his head out. might see one just coming down the side of the glass at a minute into frame probably around the center there there he goes absolutely minute we're lucky you might see him picking off a couple of those little bugs on the glass
it does fascinate me watching these things and with the cameras that we got today it's um I could watch it all day I really could there's so much happening in a little tiny tank this is only a little foot long tank and it's amazing how much life you can cram into such a small space he's making a right little home in there that blood worm very busy there you go guys, got one just coming into frame. Let's see if he nails any little little bugs. There's plenty to choose from. It's probably full up, there's that much in there. Anyway guys, I hope you liked that little video on the Neon Tetra update. Obviously we're going to keep on doing them now won't be as frequent now obviously it's going to take um you know a number of weeks before these guys get up to a certain size but i'll do periodic videos and upload them for you to see the growth rates as we go along okay anyway guys as always thanks for tuning in you're all stars tune in next time where we'll be breeding something a little bit different bye for now Just me and my